Okay, hi again, it's me. Um, and today you can see my screensaver has changed. So this is showing the company that I work for, uh, Academy Training Solutions Limited. So if you do need any extra advice or you want to pay for training, then come along and see us or give us a call and we'll come to you. Now, today I've been asked to have a look at AutoCAD again. And this was to do with dynamic blocks. Now, somebody's asked me to do a dynamic door block. Now there are a couple of things here that are slightly complicated. Now firstly, most doors are in imperial architectural measurements, so the first thing we should do is we should change our units to architectural. Um, you can set the precision here as well, I'm going to set it to half an inch. And make sure you choose your insertion scale of inches as well, and then click OK. And now we're going to start by creating our simple block. So I'm just going to draw the actual door itself and I'm going to make it a 30 inch um, by a 1.5 inch door and I'm going to put an arc on it as well. Now I need to choose a certain type of arc because I only know certain points here so I'm going to choose center start and angle. So the center of my arc is the hinge, the start is the next corner along the same axis of the door and my angle is 90 degrees. So there's my simple door and the reason I've done that arc in such a way is as you see the arc must go from this edge here um, and actually doors need to be trimmed at an angle to actually allow it to be closed properly. Okay so here we are we've got our basic shape now we need to create a block from this shape so I'll just select it and say create and I'm gonna call this dynamic door Okay, now I want to specify a base point and I'm going to choose a pick point and the pick point I'm going to use, and I always use this one, is the hinge of the door. Okay, specify the objects, I've already picked them, it says I've got two objects selected, what's it going to do? It's going to delete these objects off my picture and it's also going to open in the block editor. I click OK, deletes them and here's the block editor opened. Now. To make this door dynamic, I need to add certain things. Now, I want to be able to stretch the length of the door, or basically the width of the door, um, if we're looking at it in 3Ds. Um, I need to scale the arc as well, and I also want to make it so that I can flip the door. Now, I'm going to do this in stages just so you can see each stage working. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a linear parameter which will stretch the door. Start point there end point there and I'm just going to put my distance down below so that, that's what will be visible. Now this is just a parameter it doesn't have any actions applied to it yet so I'm going to apply an action to it first of all and the action is going to be a stretch action the parameter will be this one here but I don't want to choose that point to stretch because then I'd be pulling it this way and the door will be stretching the other way so what I want to actually do is I want to choose that one as my parameter point that I use to stretch it. My stretch frame is going to cover that section there and the object is only the door, I'm not choosing the arc at this stage because I don't want to stretch the arc, I need to scale it. Um, any more objects? No, so I just press enter. Now that's done. Let's have a look and see how that works. So I close that, save the changes and I now insert this block dynamic door You'll notice it's taken the pick point as a base point, which is my um, the hinge of the door. So I just put that down there. And now when I select it, I get these dynamic tools here. And you'll see it's a 2 foot 6 door, because remember I made it 30 inches. And I can actually stretch that out, and the door itself expands. Now you notice the arc, nothing happens to the arc yet, because we haven't selected it and made anything happen to it. OK, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go in and edit my dynamic door and now we're going to work on the arc. So we've got a parameter in there already um, I'm going to choose a scale action and I want it to apply to this parameter just to that object there. Okay, no more objects, so I press enter. Now let's see what that's done. So I close the block editor, save the changes again and this time I insert my door plop it in there. Now you notice no real difference except now I've got handles at both ends. Click on there and now 
as I drag my door out, not only the door um, stretches, but the arc scales as well to fit. Yep. And if I hover over, you'll be able to see the, the dimension of the door, and you'll also see that as you're dragging it, if you've got your dynamic um, cursor turned on, your dynamic input. If you don't, just press F12 and it'll come on. Okay, I'm going to delete that again, because now we're going to add a flip onto our door. So again, go back to the door. I've got to put another parameter on this time, because I need to put a flip parameter on. And I'm going to put two of these in, because I want it to flip vertically and horizontally. So, where is my mirror line going to be? So again, I'm choosing the hinge point, and my first mirror line will be along this way. My flip state I'm going to put up here, and I'm just going to move that just so that we can actually see it clearer. Um, I'm now going to put in a different flip. I'm going to put in the flip on the vertical mirror, and I'm going to put this over here, and again, I'm just going to move the arrow along just so it can be seen clearer. Now both of these flip states, both of these um, parameters here, neither of them do anything yet. I haven't associated an action. I'm going to choose the action now. The action will be a flip associated with this flip state, which has a mirror already attached to it. Now here's where we have to be quite careful, because I'm going to put in all. Now I could actually try and select the object, but some of the objects are non-selectable, and that's these handles um, for the other parameter. So I'm going to type in all. You'll notice it now selects everything, including the, the parameters. And just press enter again. And then I'm going to repeat that for the other flip state. And again, I'm going to type all. And you'll notice it selected everything, including the flip states. And press OK. Now let's see what that's done. Save the changes. Insert our block. Pop it in there. OK. Now we can flip either way. So we can flip our door and when we click and drag we can stretch it out to a 3 foot 6 door should we set it on. And once we've stretched it you'll notice we can still flip it again in either direction. OK. That really is it. Um, it's a very simple project making a dynamic door. I hope it's been useful and thank you for listening.